So the ruse through Simpson. Ten seconds. Out to the wing and the siren sounds for three-quarter time. And the Kangaroos lead by four. What a spirited quarter by Carlton. The Kangaroos looked in control, Russell, but they kicked 6-1 to 4-2 to get right back in it. Well, they got, got back out to 20 points at one particular stage, Anthony, and just tremendous courage and character by the boys wearing that dark blue jumper out there, Kevin. Great last quarter ahead. So Matthew Lappin has been a star for Carlton. Five goals, 13-9-87, giving them a chance against the Kangaroos, 13-13-91. The Blues are overwhelmed by the number of injuries that we've had, that they've had so far in the day. But it's been a, a terrific contest between these two sides. And one of the players who was great in that third quarter was Justin Murphy. He had five kicks, three handballs, and eight disposals for the term. And he was, uh, he was. It was terrific, but they all started running, didn't they, KB and Russell? Yes, uh, got to hand it to Carlton. This is Murphy kicking a goal. And we mentioned that he had, certainly had to stand up after half time because they did lose those three players in the first half. And Wayne Britton really just trying to crank up the troops. But what about Craig Bradley? We saw his tactics. Well, he's, he's just unbelievable. He's just an absolute workhorse, and he just refuses. I was actually in Ireland a couple of years ago with him, KB. 
And uh, they did their two-hour training session. I went down the gym to ride the bike. He came down, jumped on a treadmill, went for 20 minutes, sitting on 18 kilometres an hour. And this is extra work actually after the training sessions. So he's just a, he's a workhorse. Well, we see there with uh, Carlton, the Kangaroos. Uh, Carlton had about 40 more possessions, uh, virtually leading into the second quarter. But they've dragged it back by winning a, winning a lot of the ball now, the Kangaroos. There's another game going on today. Well, in fact, it's over. And if you don't want to know the scores of Geelong and Fremantle because of a later replay, look away now. And there's Wayne Britton. Let's get down to Francis Leach. Yeah, the vibe in the Carlton camp at three-quarter time, really positive despite all those injuries. Corey McKernan can be used if he's needed in this last quarter. He's still got problems with that groin. And as for Darren Hume, well, he's dressed in on crutches. He won't take any further part. His knee's in serious trouble, as is Scott Camperiali's hamstring. And it looks like Adrian hickmont has gone to hospital to have an X-ray on that arm that he injured in that second quarter. Well, we wish him all the best. The Blues with enormous troubles injury-wise. But Matthew Lappin is... Keeping them in it. He's gone to full forward again. What would you think structurally Dennis Pagan can do, KB, as far as Lappin is concerned? Can he get extra numbers back to stop the space? Or Well, he's, he's tried so many players on him so far. We mentioned before, just before three-quarter time, King and Blake, I mean, two of their best players. Then Motlop had a crack. Young man, maybe something a little bit different. And then back to Blakey. So uh, he's tried uh, probably the best players that he's got at the moment to play on him. Uh, he's just having a really good day, Matthew Lappin, and he's such a smart player. He knows when the time is lead. He knows when to just use his body. He's their big problem up there because he was playing out of the goal square. Now, looks like Glenn Archer is going to go down and maybe play on Matthew Lappin. So Archer now has got the job. So that's his fifth opponent. The thing is, uh, Anthony, he just refuses to lay down. He just keeps running. Kevin presented himself, and, and as you say, he is smart. And then we see Bradley again. I'll tell you what, I hate to be playing on him. Harvey's actually doing the same tactics, Brent Harvey. Bradley's gone, he's going to win a free kick before the siren even sounds. Or as the siren sounded. Interesting, the free kick was taken in the centre rather than where the incident happened. So Plunkett 